everyone welcome back to the channel let's talk another one in extra video about the recap about revision stuff so we're gonna begin today we have a lot to talk about i have some stuff to want to add in you know opinions and uh, i'm gonna say that we begin today to say that uh, according to uh, Eurovision ESC, ESCExtra.com, Eurovision star Ben Bethag announces 2024 Crown the Witch UK and European Tour. And it is a pretty big tour when I saw the tour list. Uh, yeah, I think uh, according to this, uh, Ireland's Eurovision sensation Ben Bethag is the set to embark on a headline tour across the UK and Europe, bringing their unique Oja pop to the sound to fans in a series of electrifying performances. The tour title Crown the Witch, the catchphrase, uh, following Bambi Thug's impressive sixth place when finished at the Eurovision Song Contest 2024, despite the fact that the fact that the Bambi Thug was one of those acts who want to withdraw, but sixth place when it does sound nice, right? On your rec on your resume. With their hit song Bloomsday, Doomsday Blue, I mean the song is not bad. The 28th day tour kicks off of August 30 in Brighton, so in less than uh, into almost three months, two months in Brighton and concludes with a Hong Kong show in Cork in October 7. November 7, Bambi Thug shared their excitement about the upcoming tour by saying, so excited to bring Oja Pop to many countries on my first ever headline tour with Crown the Witch Tour, except Magic Tour Music and Expect Magic Music and More. Looking forward to welcome you into the content X. And uh, here's the late list. So we begin Barry Sark's tour will traverse a range of cities providing an in immersive experience to fans across different countries. Key stops include Manchester, Glasgow, London, Amsterdam, Paris, Berlin and Stockholm. So here we have it. If you wanna if you wanna go see the Crown Witch and um, here's your tour. The tour dates begin on August 30 and ends on here. On Cork City Hall in Ireland, and Bambi Thug is making a stop uh, in Stockholm on, on September 30 at the Slakt Kyrkjan. And I did look it up. We can look it here. Uh, this is actually uh, this uh, venue's page, and we're talking about this tour. And here's the promo pic. And uh, yeah. Uh, all the way from Cork Island, Bambi Thar comes to visit Sweden in Alum with their witch liking aesthetic in Ultra Pop. Bambi Thug reference one would be referred to them, they, them, and Faye. Okay, that's a new one. Crosses uh, gender and social political stereotypes, creating a very uh, era identifying sound that borders elements from pop rock electronic sound that creates the term orja pop so anyway so here he is on monday september 30 on uh, at seven o'clock in the evening we have a tour in sweden so if you want to go and i think i saw on the price i think the price for one ticket is uh, 45 euro 450 kronor 45 dollars for a ticket, and I think the venue holds uh, 750 people. So not a big, so not a big venue, but 750 people at like to sit in Sweden, in Stockholm, in September 30. If you want to go, uh, okay, uh, yeah. If you want to read this, I'm gonna link everything down below. So yeah, and if you want to go, the tickets are on sale. They have been on sale since Tuesday, May. 28th so yeah in addition to the headline tour baby thug is set to perform on the main state main stage at download festival i don't know where that is uh, reflecting on the busy schedule baby thug told mmea i can't wait after your vision i was like i'm gonna be so bored then i realized i only have a few weeks before download so it's not going to stop it feels even better because obviously i have bits in my music that are metal but I cross a lot of genres. 
Well, of course. I mean, anyway, if you want to go and see Bambi Sarg on the Crown Witch the tour, here's the tour date. Go and report back. Anyway, let's move on to something else. I mean, we might have a new country coming to Eurovision next year, and that might be Liechtenstein. But I thought Liechtenstein was going to be part of Eurovision years ago. But Radio Liechtenstein is applying for membership of the European Broadcast Union, according to Liechtensteiner Vaterland. The Liechtenstein newspaper Liechtensteiner Vaterland reports that Radio Liechtenstein is in the progress of applying for membership of the European Broadcast Union. According to the report, the aim of EWU membership is to enable participation in Eurovision Song Contest. I thought that Liechtenstein was going to be a part of Eurovision years ago, but apparently not. So, in early 2010s, Liechtenstein showed some interest to enter the contest, but uh, yeah, I mean, but uh, Peter Kolbel, former director of One FL TV, who was passionate about Liechtenstein competing at Eurovision, but plans for the nation to join was halted. Oh, after Kolbel passed away four years ago, I was like, yeah, I thought they were going to join later, but anyway. In 2022, they were no longer aiming for joining the European Broadcast Union, but apparently they are now. So I think they should, if you want to read the whole article, article you can do that, but I think they should join the Eurovision Song Contest song because it is ex ex experience for the singers in. I don't know anything about Liechtenstein music, so can't wait to see what they bring. And uh, uh, little did you Nathan, uh, should your, your Radio Liechtenstein gain membership in the EBU, it will join 13 other full members of the EBU that are radio only broadcasters. However, it would be highly unlikely that Radio Liechtenstein could compete in Eurovision Broad Song Contest songs, as in no radio only broadcasters have ever taken part in the event, as the contest requires a television broadcast in the participation countries. Well, we can see what happens, but anyway, they want to be a member, so maybe Liechtenstein will join later on. Um, next news. We have we have already Eurovision drama for 2025, so uh, according to EurovisionFound.com, I think we are up to now 13 countries that have uh, already announced that they're going to participate in next year's, next year's Eurovision. Sweden is one of them. And Germany has now announced, and now Israel. According to EurovisionFound.com, Eurovision Israel has confirmed it, its participation for 2025. The country that was in the high spotlight this year, like no other, <laughs> yeah, it, she was, like before and during the contest, has confirmed its participation for 20, Eurovision 2025. While it's in a short time, it will announce details for the selection process that will follow. Okay, uh, Israeli public television has confirmed <coughs> to uh, colleagues, the people at Euromix, that it will be participate in Eurovision 2025 next May in Switzerland. In fact, as pointed out, Khan has going it's going to give more information in the next period of time how to highlight the artist as well as the song that will represent the country in the next contest. I mean, I don't think Israel should should. Um, we draw after what happened with Ingolan. Golan. I think after the very successful result with the televotes, I think Israel should try, should should stay in the contest, if you ask me. I mean, the thing is that if it was reversed that Israel got zero points and, I, and they want to withdraw because, you know what, okay, you don't want us here, we get it. I mean, and then I will be like, yeah, of course, if you want to withdraw, maybe come back in a few years. Who knows? But now, since the televote was the second, Eden Golan was the second with the televotes, I kind of understand why they are still here, even though this caused drama. But anyway, although they have not settled in on the selection method so far, they most likely to continue on with the rising star ha Hako ha Haba, rising star format, which is kind of like Melfest and, and, and Sweden Idol, if you mix it. Through which, since 2015, where they have used it, they have always qualified to the finals, achieving one win in 2018 and one, two more top tens. Of course, the interna internal selection is not included either, as was done in the case of North Korea. Yeah, she was just selected, and we have the song Unicorn. Uh, unic unicorn. 
in the possibility of a national finals does not seem to get any chance. Anyway, and they say Khan hopes that Eurovision 2025 will be quieter, less drama, hoping to for a more peaceful se season season for everyone. I think we <coughs> I think we all want that because it was so much drama. I think I understand that they want to compete, but it'd be like okay, we we less drama next year, and I think we all need that because 2025 was such a dramatic year. And um, we have some one more news to talk about, but Israel is the 11th country so far to express desire to participate in Eurovision 2025. I think they write the wrong not year. Following Austria, Belgium, Luxembourg, Malta, Spain, Portugal, Croatia, Germany, and host Switzerland, host Switzerland and Sweden, so we are 13 and Germany. Um, yeah, I mean, so I think they, I think they should be in the contest next year as well. So. And uh, how do I feel about Israel still here? I think they should stay. Anyway, the biggest story for this one is the fact that we are still talking about the Eurovision 2025 because I have to I have to talk about this. Because I asked you in a poll and it was very even. Some people don't care about this anymore, but I was like, I have to compete talk about it because as a Eurovision geek news thingy, I have to talk about it. And the now we have Switzerland, we have uh, we have Switzerland, Greece, and then who else was denying this? Now we have Portugal. We have three countries out of the six that threatened to withdraw from the competition, coming out and denying the fact that they wanted to withdraw from the Eurovision finals because, as we all know, that um, 30 minutes before the finals, they come to agreement that they should be competing, but. <sighs> <clears throat> I think they wanted to withdraw from the competition and I said it to someone else who also talk, talks about Eurovision. I think they want to create a big moment and be like, you know, the six fan favorites are walking away from the Eurovision Song Contest songs, Song Contest finals and creating a moment and make EBU look bad because look what they did to the six fan favorites. But I think, yeah, let's talk about this. Uh, the article of the Norwegian, Norwegian v newspaper Via Gia, I think it was Via, via Gia, not Via Co, is developing into a fiasco since uh, Greece and Switzerland and one more country out of the six that would have been supposed to thinking of withdrawing. They're withdrawing from the Eurovision 2024 finals, denies the allegation information. I think it's not a fiasco, I think they are damaged in controlling this because. Portugal has become the third country to deny that it considering pulling out of the 2025, 2024 finals and that it was in discuss, discussions with EBU up until 25 minutes before the live broadcast of the show. And Rita Baradas, director of the record company that, that which Yolanda belongs, represent of the country in Malmö, categorically denies all the, all the above. As for Portugal, the possibility of withdrawing from the Eurovision Song Contest was never discussed and there were no discussion of the issue with EBU, Barada says in an interview with the Portuguese new newspaper Bleach. In addition, in addition, she clarifies the content of the discussion with EBU. Although there were many controversial issues surrounding the current Eurovision, Portugal's withdrawing on, that, on, day were, on the finals was never on the agenda. Yeah, I think they're still damaging and controlling this because I, some part of me actually believes this. They do want to withdraw. And it is a little bit ironic that fact that the girl club, the girl group, I mean, the, the friend group, Switzerland and Greece and Ireland and Portugal were part of the six countries that went through with the withdrawal. I mean, Norway to me, of all the six entries, are actually the one that gives me the valid reason why they want to withdraw. UK, Oli Alexander, who cares? I mean, Oli Alexander signed. I mean, to me, it is a little bit. I think Oli Alex, if Oli Alexander would have any credibility left with me, if he, I think I would actually appreciate it more the fact that if he came out on Instagram and saying that, hey, the BBC want me to compete for the UK, but I said no because I signed this paper of Queers for Palestine after the fact that Israel was going to compete. I would actually be more okay with this. 
Now you have if this is true, Ole Alexander coming to Eurovision, performing the semifinals, gaining fans, gaining support regardless of the zero points, and then we have the news that he want Ole Alexander want to withdraw from the competition. Why were you even here? Anyway, R ERT was the first to categorically deny this news throughout the Eurasian Fund, while a few days later Switzerland was added on the list, stating that would never any thoughts on the country's withdrawal, withdrawal from the competition from the contest. It, it is worth noting that e e ERT circles, when they are denying the information about the alleged withdrawal of the Greek participation, warned us that the report was equally untrue for the rest of the countries included on the dispute article. Was it because they did an interview with Gota from Norway and I think they gave a very good reason. It is therefore questionable if the VEGA's via intention is why you spread such fake news, which is only caused by shaking a bad decision which this year hurt the Eurasian contest so much. Uh, the three countries now left to clarify the stance and confirm whatever they want. They were indeed considering pulling out of the Eurovision 2024. I think someone needs to rewrite the rewrite the article 2024 and not 2025. Our island, the UK, and Norway. I mean, I'm gonna say I think they want to withdraw from the competition because I think there's some truth to this. I think they want to withdraw from the competition, but I think. <coughs> I mean, I think it is, if I, mean, I think I've said it. I said it to someone else. I said it this: if Israel get, if Israel gets so few points of the contest of the televotes, imagine if, if some, in, in some cases it will not get zero points from um, the public. I think they will actually come out and defending. They actually standing by the fact they want to withdraw. But now the fact that Ine Golan was the runner up in the televotes and only be, was beaded by Croatia, who won the televotes, and then yeah, the Ukraine and you know it's down, down, down. I think they actually realized that this was a bad look. I don't know if, if if this is true or not, but if it is true, it is a bad look on the winner for me, especially because. This is not a bad look on the winner because I'd be like, now I want to question, now I want to ask, do you want to withdraw from the competition, Nemo? Because if it is a very big coincidence that the fact that the four of the, the six countries were the friend circle with e e Ireland, Greece, Switzerland, and Portugal, they were the friend circle when you saw the result in the televotes. Or the jerk points throughout the finals. They were the friend circle. So am I surprised that they maybe have talked together about, you know, we want to withdraw? No. And I think the UK's reason, UK's reason was because uh, Ole Alexander signed the petition of Queers of Palestine and Gauta to me gave me only good, actually good reasons because I don't, I think they didn't feel, you know, safe in this environment. And felt like they were a machine that probably, you know, couldn't take a stand on anything. So I can understand why Gauthier want to be like, no, thank you. But also the fact that they are signed by contract and would get a financial fine if they walked away. So I, I'd be like, yeah, you're just damaging controlling this. That is how I feel about this. They are just damaging controlling this, and it is not a good look on you either. Regardless, the fact that. Now the question is, who is lying? Is the newspaper lying or are the countries lying? Are uh, Yolanda lying? Is Nemo lying? Is the Mariana Sati lying? Or is the newspaper lying? Because it is the question who is lying and regardless if it is true or not, the fact that we have this question of this, of the, on these six countries, these entries, did you want to withdraw? It is not a good look, so anyway, see you later. Oh, hi, you're still here. Have you? Yeah, I hope you have not forgotten to subscribe. So, subscribe here and look for the uh, recommended video over here and end credit now. Bye. <laughs>